Hello, and welcome to the fall edition of Some Arts uh, here on Somerville Media Center. I'm happy to be joined with Yuritsa Menjivar from the Somerville Arts Council. How are you doing, Yuritsa? Hello, I'm good. I'm a little cold. It's a little cold in my house already. <laughs> so I'm feeling the fall vibes for sure. The cold weather is upon us. Um, yeah, and that we're going to touch on, you provided this really great list of programs that the Arts Council is running this fall, um, and we'll try to touch on each of them. Um, so we're going to start off with some public art, and that includes uh, a mural at Gachao uh, with an artist, Alexandre Keto. So what, what sort of details can you provide about uh, Alexandre and this mural that they're producing? Yeah, so we're really excited about this. It's something we've been working on, of course, because of COVID and things were slowed down a bit a lot with public art. And um, so it's exciting to see it come to life. And that's what's happening this week, actually. So he arrives Sunday. Alexander Cato is from Brazil, um, but he lives within the United States and works. He's worked on over, I don't know, I was reading about him, like over a crazy amount of murals. And so we're lucky to have him here in Somerville. Um, and he's working on a mural that uh, touches upon uh, the culture of Brazil and specifically like the cultural dance, samba. And um, yeah, so it's gonna be happening, it's happening outside of the restaurant Gao Xiao um, in East Somerville. Um, so if you're around and you wanna say hi, he's there. Um, and we'll also be having a small artist talk with him. Um, and I'll talk more about that in our virtual programming section, but, but yeah. Great. Yeah. And so, uh, so we're recording this, um, on October 8th. So he'll be flying in, um, you know, the Sunday following that. And so the week of, what is it? October 11th, he'll be, he'll be in town painting this. Um, no, he's here this week. Oh, he's here this week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're around, you know, this week, um, he'll be there. And um, yeah, he's he's really great to talk to. And um, he's enjoying um, being in Somerville. And he's like, there's a lot of Brazilian people around me. He's like, it's great because he gets asked about what he's doing. And he's right outside this Brazilian restaurant. So he's that's, been having a good time. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So moving on to another public art project is a uh, photo wheat pasting series also in East Somerville. What can you let us know about that? So actually, this is a street over from where the mural is happening. And this uh, public art exhibition went up last week. Um, and it's about six uh, photographers, local photographers who uh, we made a call earlier in the summer as well. And uh, the call was for specifically uh, BIPOC, so Black Indigenous People of Color, um, and it was really to showcase like what the experience has been to be a person of color during this uh, time of COVID, and specifically also as an artist, and how they have used photography to get through these times. Um, so the exhibit, it, it showcases two photographs for each person, and uh, the process is just we printed all the images on, on like copy paper. So it's like very thin paper, but we mixed wheat and water and it creates kind of like this paste. So we use it to just put the image right on the wall. And yeah, so the exhibit, um, you know, talks about something that's so timely right now. And it's also just a beautiful uh, piece of art to, to look at when you're walking down the streets. So it's so right. Where in East Somerville are these going to be? Um, so these are right on a wall on Glen Street, intersecting with Broadway. So right in front of the, the library, the East Branch Library, um, the street is like right there. And they're right outside. So it's it's safe to visit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. And then um, there's a video projection series. We saw the call out for this, um, I think, as early as the spring of this year. Um, and now you're, you're putting together this project. It's um, some video projections in Union Square. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so um, as you know, we have a projector up on one of the buildings in Union Square. And uh, like, you, like you mentioned earlier this uh, summer, we put out a call for, uh, you know, artists, animation artists, video artists, um, photographers, or really any discipline that can be displayed. 
And uh, yeah, so the exhibit is really just, it was very open. So whatever you wanted to submit, the only restriction is that there is no audio. So that was sort of like a, a small challenge, but um, we hope to be able to provide that uh, at some point in the future. Um, but yeah, the, the projection is, is really just an open call for all video artists. Um, and right now we have created a schedule and we will begin to showcase in November. Um, and we'll be showing a group of artists every month, uh, trying to cover, we received a lot of submissions for this. So we tried to be very open on how uh, we wanted to show it. And we have like an animation section, we have a dance section, and uh, there's plenty more that will be showcased at, in November and then December, January, and so on. Um, but we'll be providing more information on our website. And yeah, stay tuned. It's going to be really exciting. Very it's nice. Just and play website, live. <laughs> website is somervillearts.council.org. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. We also give, you know, uh, we give updates on our Instagram a lot too. So uh, follow us there. It's more, it's more immediate on our stories. Um, it's easier to access if you're on your phone too. So definitely follow us on Instagram. <laughs> Great. Um, now you, we were talking about this um, kind of community project with uh, involving lanterns. Um, so can you can you expand on on what that's about this lantern project? Yeah. So um, the lantern project is more uh, kind of like a branch from Ignite, which we will also talk about uh, today. Um, and it's it's you know Ignite has always been like a community project, a community event, and unfortunately we can't provide that this year but a way to be able to bring people together we thought the idea of ignite is light and fire um, and since there are darker days approaching we we thought that we would create a community project from home and uh, so the lantern project uh, Heather who has been the the main person for this <laughs> for this project um, has was contacted different organizations and um, galleries and art spaces in Somerville who she provided with materials to create these lanterns. Um, so right now there's like over a hundred pieces that are out. And so we're expecting to have at least that many or more um, for the final result. But oh. uh, yeah, it, it, we got a really good um, outreach for that, which is great. Um, and yeah, so th these lanterns will be displayed as part of Ignite um, and kind of creating like a pathway through Union Square and lighting up the square just showing some kind of uh, light in the, the darkness of times, but also the visual darkness. <laughs> very nice. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds like it'll be very uplifting. Um, as you say, like the, the, it's the time of year where we lose daylight, uh, where it starts getting dark at like four o'clock. <laughs> so yeah, if we, if we have some sort of uh, like nice little symbols of hope uh, as exactly. you're walking through uh, Union Square, that'd be nice. Yeah, and we also wanted to give it like a community touch. So we thought that this would be a, a good way to do it. Very nice. Yeah. Um, and then the Inside Out Gallery, and that's in Davis Square, right? The, the CBS windows. Yes, so we have a new exhibit up um, and uh, it, it's about um, honk bands from around the world. Um, and it's, the, it's like a photographic retrospective of um, like a virtual honk, um, like the worldwide honk, sorry. Um, so yeah, take a look at it if you can. There's a lot of, uh, there's photographs, but there's also uh, things like handmade things to look through. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. What will that be up for? Um, I believe it'll be up for a month or so. It's usually up for four or five, six weeks around there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's, you know, again, it's accessible. You're walking by it, you can see it, so. Very nice, great. Um, and then there's some there's some announcements. Um, there's some grant related stuff uh, that we we need to talk about. Um, so I'll just I'll just uh, let you start off with uh, you know this five hundred thousand dollar commitment from the mayor. Um, <laughs> yes. Arts organization. Very exciting news. Very exciting. So um, earlier in uh, well in September we had like town hall meeting. Um, it is on their YouTube channel. So uh, for more detailed information on what 
on what this commitment is about, I would definitely take a look at the at the YouTube video um, because there are the counselors and the mayor um, talking about this investment that they that they gave to the community, uh, which I'm really excited to announce so, that the city uh, is investing $500,000 in emergency relief funding for the arts and, cu and culture here in Somerville, um, which we have been able to add and increase the amount of money we are giving out for our grants. Um, so I'm not sure, like the COVID grant uh, deadline is passed now, but we will be announcing um, the organizations that are going to receive funding from this specific grant. Um, so the co the COVID grant was a, a grant specifically for organizations that have had a real hit from COVID um, and like the shutdowns and all that. So we will be announcing that soon, um, but there's still the, a grant that's open. And the reason that the turnaround for that one is faster is because um, the organizations are needing the money like yesterday, you know, so yeah. this was our way of, of being able to give a faster turnaround. Um, so trying to reach these organizations was a huge part of, of our, our like work these past weeks was just trying to get the word out there. Um, but moving on to the BIPOC grant, this grant specific to um, Black, Indigenous, people of color. Um, and it's, you don't have to be like a BIPOC artist in, able, in, in order to be able to submit to this grant, which I think is really important to, to say, it just has to benefit um, the BIPOC community in Somerville specifically. Um, but, you know, creating programs, creating virtual stuff like, ed, like educational programming or um, anything to help the community, um, any, anything of that sorts would uh, apply for this grant. So. Um, I'm, I really urge people to sign up for this. Um, and if you're an artist, you're, you're able to apply as an individual artist, like a fellowship, or if you're an organization, you're able to apply for that as well. So there's two different sections to it. Um, and the deadline is October 12th. So there's still time. Uh, the, the application, I promise it's super simple and straightforward. Um, and any questions, of course, you can email us. You can email me directly. Um, and yeah, so... That's a huge grant that we're, we've been trying to push uh, the, now since, uh, since we put it out. But, um, and there will be a third grant given the, the announcement from the 500,000. Um, there will be an additional grant, just we are still determining what the amount of money will be for that uh, given the, that we had already announced the COVID and the BIPOC grants. So there's definitely more uh, opportunities coming through. So. Uh, like I said, follow us on Instagram because it's really where we're, or Facebook, it's where we're pushing um, the announcements for and updates for all these grants. Mm, yeah, it's great. It's great to hear about that commitment from the city, uh, just with, with the various uh, arts organizations within the city, um, mm -hmm. the Arts of the Armory, Artisans Asylum, Mudflat, you know, um, and they're all different. They all have different funding structures and some of them are membership based, some of them aren't. Um, so just something to address like how wildly different, um, you know, all, all these uh, and how unique the, the financial duress is for each of these arts organizations um, and how the city is addressing that. It's, it's good to hear. Yeah, it's nice to have the support and, uh, and to know that your city wants you to move forward and to, and to continue. So uh, yeah, and, and you know, like I said, we're here for any questions. Um, we're here for support. Uh, we're open to projects to collaborating as well and uh, being able to uh, provide any kind of support for organizations and artists. Yeah. Yeah, and um, so the, um, the programming um, that, that you still have going on, um, obviously there's, there's um, COVID to account for. So everybody's event season is upended by that and a lot of, um, uh, things that were outdoors are virtual. Um, so yeah, so Ignite, November 7th, it's typically the, the last, one of the last items in your events calendar. Um, so how, how are you um, adapting Ignite this year? Right, so Ignite. Um, so this year, it's going to be more 
you know, we can't call it an event, we can't call it a gathering, we can't get people together, but we can support businesses, right? Um, we can uh, urge people to to go out and enjoy the last days that we can be out without snow. Um, so it's going to be like ignite a night out type of type of like vibe, I guess. Um, so it's it's going to be super simple. We're going to we're collaborating with businesses in Union Square, asking them to uh, provide like a, a menu or like a plate or a cocktail or something of some sorts that involves um, fire. And uh, we will be announcing uh, which restaurants and what like what treats they'll have. Um, and then we'll also be in pushing people to like dress up or to um, dress up in onesies or uh, put on like all this gear with you uh, so that you are warm outside as you're dining or drinking a cocktail. Um, but you're also enjoying and, and helping the businesses. Um, another way is we're asking, we will also be having art installations around Union Square that like the Lantern Project um, that will be kind of like lights all over the square. Um, so we are collaborating with different artists that will be exhibiting their art installations around the square. Um, and we'll also be bringing out our tiger <laughs> that's usually out. And that will be sort of like a photo booth that people have the opportunity to take pictures with, especially if you dress up in your onesies or any costume that you want. Um, and uh, the businesses will also be collaborating by uh, putting out lights around their dining area um, and we'll be helping out with that aspect of it too. So maybe putting out lanterns around the square, um, putting out different uh, colored lights and um, anything that resembles fire. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. And it, it sounds like it's a really good way to, uh, to support the area businesses, um, especially as they, um, uh, I don't know the details of it, but I, the licenses have been extended for outdoor dining um so mm -hmm. i think through the end of the year don't quote me on that but <laughs> yeah, <it's good. laughs> and this is a nice way to to get out there um and this is uh november 7th correct november 7th yes okay. excellent yeah and we'll be putting out more information we're working on the, pro uh, the promotion aspect now but um this is a good kind of like sneak peek of what is to come um and and yeah you know just kind of motivating people to you know, I've heard of like ice bars that people love going to. So this is like a good way of like enjoying the cold weather and being being warm. We're also going to like promote like bring your own blanket type of thing. So, um, you know, staying warm is important, but we want to support the businesses as well. Very nice. Yeah. Um, and then finally, the um, the music series that the Somerville Arts Council has been uh, putting forward since the spring, I believe. Um, why don't you talk about how, how that's going to continue into uh, the fall and into the end of the year? Uh, yeah, so the Home Alone Art Series is has been like a virtual program that we started back in April. Um, it's It was really just a quick, fast turnaround way to continue to support artists. I know a lot of our festivals and events um, hire artists to perform or to you know, to, to do their community projects. And this was a way to be able to do it virtually. Um, and for the summer, for the spring and summer, we did a, an early fall, we did a lot of, um, we did like lectures and studio tours. We did uh, small workshops uh, through this programming. Um, but, you know, to continue it for the winter, uh, we're all, we also understanding that like virtual programming can be a lot and we know that there's a lot happening around us. Um, but if it's, if it's the way that we can help artists, we're going to continue to push it. And right now we're also working on uh, collaborating with different organizations to be able to reach a, a higher audience, um, but also to continue supporting artists and organizations. Um, so it'll be a combination of panel talks. There'll be a combination of workshops conversations with artists. Um, for example, we're going to start it off by showcasing the, the talk with Cato, who's working on the mural. Um, and uh, the virtual, like the Home Alone Art Series began by just doing a Facebook Live 
Um, for this time around, we want to change it around and do something more formal where people have to sign up and um, not have to, but like are, are allowed to sign up or to, to view it in a different way, like YouTube. Like we, we want to be able to also pre-record some footage and to be able to compile it into a video. And uh, for example, for Cato, uh, we've been doing um, some quick like video work around him doing the mural himself like right now. Uh, so the process of it and then being able to incorporate that footage into his talk. Um, so that's kind of a way that we have changed the, the series, but we're also open to just doing live live streaming because like I said, we want to be able to, to, con to continue to be accessible for our public, but also for artists to, to, to be hired and to be able to, to earn some money through it as well. Very nice. Yeah. One thing, one thing that I saw on this list that I, that I skipped over was uh, very important is the LCC grant deadline. Yes, I was going to bring it up. <laughs> I'm like, wait, we need to talk about this. <laughs> Make sure we hit that because that's really important, uh, especially for, for local artists and um, art organizations. So uh, what can you tell us about the LCC grants this year? Yeah, so the LCC grants, um, as you may have known, they have been a bit delayed, um, but this program is it's overseen by the Mass Cultural Council. So there was some sort of happening there with the state, but the applications are now open um, and available. We are going to update our website this Friday um, with all of the information that's required. But the deadline, the new deadline to apply is Monday, November 16th. So, you know, everything is pretty much the same, um, but, you know, we're happy to work with you on how to make uh, the community projects happen or um, the requirements. We're, we're, we're able to help with uh, advising on how to, um, any questions that you have for the grant. Um, but, but yeah, more information will be up very soon. Um, and the deadline is November 16th. So don't forget to apply. <laughs> All right. There's, there's so many opportunities right now. You know, there's the BIPOC grant, there's the, the LCC grant that's upcoming. I think the BIPOC has a faster turnaround with our answers in the LCC. So I really, I urge everyone to apply to both. Um, they're, they're great opportunities. Excellent. Um, excellent, uh, you know, kind of summary of what's going on and the resources that are available from the Somerville Arts Council. So any, if anybody has any questions about um, any of this, feel free to reach out to Yuritza um, and go to somervillearts.council.org for, uh, for the details. Um, so I, wanna, I wanna thank you, Yuritza. Um, this has been great. Thank you, yeah, no, thank you, because this is a great opportunity for us to share, you know? And um, yeah, so if you if, just want to quickly say, if you if anybody has um, wants to participate in the Home Alone Art Series, you know, message me, we can talk. Uh, we're always open to collaborating with you, so. Yeah. Very good. All right, thank you, Rita. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>